Welcome to Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. Wildlife and conservation stories occur all over the world. While filming our shows in these distant places, there were many adventures creating some wonderful, memorable moments. Many of these I shared with Jim Fowler. Memories we'll never forget, Marlon. It's odd how these come back with real impact when you encounter something that triggers the memory. I agree. Every time I see a pair of gauntlet gloves, they remind me of a pair of very appealing young animals in the Florida Everglades. It happened when Ranger Jim Jordan and I set out to rescue two cougar kittens who were in no mood to be rescued. This area would soon be flooded, and since their mother was already immobilized for relocation to a new territory, we had to move her kittens too, or they would have perished. Cute little kittens they were, but they already knew how to defend themselves. In addition to needle-sharp teeth, these kittens can quickly unsheath an array of impressive weapons on each foot. He was the one that proved that even the tough gloves I was wearing were not a sure protection. Why was this a memorable moment? That's easy. These kittens were so vulnerable, yet courageous and feisty, you couldn't help but remember them. Also, they became the genesis of a strong cougar population in their new home and helped an endangered species toward recovery. There's a great deal of satisfaction in being involved in that kind of success story. Working with young animals is always rewarding, Jim. And this painting of a black bear cub always brings back one of my fondest memories. It was late in the winter and snowmobiles were the only reliable means of overland transportation. I was with Lynn Rogers, a bear researcher with the U.S. Forest Service, who was tagging female bears while they were hibernating and studying their young born during hibernation. The opening to the first bear den was quickly cleared. It was occupied by a big female bear who'd had her cub. Lynn immediately tranquilized the female to prevent her awakening while we studied her new baby. The drug was fast acting and we had only a very short time to wait before we would be able to safely remove the cub. At birth, the black bear is even smaller than this, but this was still one of the tiniest and sleepiest cubs I'd ever encountered. Only moments later, we got our big surprise, when Lynn Rogers suddenly chuckled happily at having discovered a second cub. That's not an extremely uncommon occurrence, but it was a pleasant surprise, providing a valuable opportunity for study. We didn't want to take any chances of the cubs getting chilled and sick, so with Lynn's help, I temporarily became a surrogate mother for them. They showed no signs of fear at all and quickly quieted down. How memorable an event was this? Well, when a couple of tiny trusting wild animals snuggle up to you for safety and comfort, it suddenly becomes a very memorable event indeed and one that you never forget. That winter incident ought to bring to mind a memorable moment you had once, Jim, in Wyoming. 
It involved a red neckband. That's right. And you don't forget a red neckband like this when it's the basis for your jumping out of a flying helicopter without a parachute. Even in the lower mountain valleys, there was deep powdery snow that year, and we were doing our best to tag as many elk as we could with numbered red neck bands so scientists could trace their movements. Because of the bitter cold air and the deep snow, it was deemed unwise to tranquilize the animal. So our biologist, Dick Denny, came up with a plan. He decided that it would be safest for the elk if we merely jumped on the animal and pinned it in the snow. I'll never forget the first time I tried it. just as we'd planned, but it was harder to pin the animal down than I had anticipated. Fortunately, the chopper came swinging back right away, and the job became easier when Dick Denny gave me a hand. Even today, there are times when I see the color red that I remember this unique animal capture. That was exciting, Jim. I'll never forget it. And I don't think I'll ever do that again. Quite often, some of our most memorable moments occurred during animal captures. I won't soon forget the time in Mexico when Jim and I captured a big cat. That's right. We thought it might be a bit difficult. But I don't think we were prepared for what actually occurred. The jaguar is a big cat. And it's always a bundle of dynamite. We had managed to bring the jaguar to bay by using dogs. It had been killing cattle, so it was necessary to capture and relocate the animal. That was the job of John Lilly, a well-known lion tracker of the Southwest. <laughs> The cat stepped into the noose, and John pulls the rope tight and has the noose in perfect position around the shoulder and chest, not just the neck. While John held the cat, we quickly got the dogs away before the jaguar could harm them. Then it became John's job to move the cat to one side in order to get it suspended over the net. We thought that once in the net, the worst would be over. It sure didn't take long to realize how badly the cat's strength had been underestimated. Thank <laughs> you.
Without question, this jaguar was one of the most powerful and tenacious animals we've ever handled. The cat almost escaped twice and was still fighting when we finally called for help. We've helped capture hundreds of animals, but this one had to rank among the most memorable of all. I'll go along with that, Jim, but I can recall the time when a lack of success in a capture was what made it memorable. It happened in northern Australia when we were pursuing an animal and Stan Brock made a misjudgment. The buffalo cow we were chasing seemed to be tiring. Stan felt he could catch it by hand. His plan was to simply jump out and grab the tail and hold on while buffalo catcher Alan Fisher and the rest of us put ropes over the buffalo's head. That was a lot easier said than done. Even at this point, we had no idea this was shaping up to be one of Wild Kingdom's more memorable encounters. When Stan finally leaped out after the fleeing buffalo, it took only a moment for the situation to totally reverse itself. Alan Fisher finally was able to help Stan when just at that time the buffalo decided he'd had enough of this nonsense today and so had Stan. We all concluded that the only victor of this memorable encounter was the buffalo. It's not unusual for things to go not quite as planned during chases. I remember a particular one I was involved in up in Canada that went awry. We'd been tagging moose from a helicopter when we found this moose swimming across a lake. It seemed as if it would be a simple matter to move in right behind it. Then I could climb out on the pontoon, and when the chopper was in the right position, I could reach out and attach an ear tag before we reached the shore. The moose was getting away, but our pilot, Oscar Sedin, quickly put us in position again. So close, and yet so far. If only I could get a good hold on the moose. I was left with a strong conviction that the moose laughed all the way to shore. <laughs> <laughs> Several of our very memorable times were with elephants, and I think Jim was involved in one of the most unforgettable encounters. That's right. It was in the Okavango during the dry season, and a herd of elephants had moved into a dry riverbed where they had dug holes to collect underground water seepage. I was with Ranger Simon Holmes Accord to see how the elephants found water here. First, we approached them downwind, sitting on the ground, pretending to be wild animals. Nothing made me feel so small and insignificant as those elephants did when we were sitting only a few yards away from them. Suddenly, the situation became dangerous when a cow with a small calf moved toward us. We prepared to retreat if she came any closer, but she didn't. To our great relief, they returned to the holes in the sand to continue drinking. I found it remarkable that they had learned to survive by digging water holes in the sand. Even though the holes were quickly sucked dry of the water that had collected in them, 
A series of holes like these in a dry riverbed gives them enough water to survive. Suddenly, a bull elephant became aware of our presence. It was a touchy situation. If we had shown fear and tried to run away, he would have charged us. Instead, we bluffed him by throwing a small stick which caused him to retreat. That gave us a chance to cautiously back off ourselves, paying particular attention to the bull who had challenged us. The bluff worked, and we were able to walk away. Jim, I think you're just too smart to try that again. <laughs> <laughs> too smart and too slow. <laughs> Elephants are memorable of themselves, but when you add the element of mother love, you're apt to wind up with one of the most memorable moments of all. From a helicopter, we were immobilizing elephant calves in Africa so they could be inoculated against disease. As usual, the herd ran off, but this time, a cow refused to let the helicopter force her away from her calf. The immobilizing drug had taken effect, and the calf could not stand. She tried to raise her youngster to its feet. long time did she finally move off after the others, not knowing that the calf would soon be returned to her. On a lighter note, Marlon, I recall a very memorable incident that was also very amusing involving you and a monkey. Oh, I could never forget that one, Jim. It happened when water backed up by a new dam in Venezuela flooded the jungle and a stranded monkey unexpectedly gave us quite a time when we tried to rescue it. Dr. Pedro Trabal and I spotted a capuchin monkey on a floating tree. It seemed like a simple enough matter to capture it and release it in a safer area. This monkey had other ideas. last, it was Dr. Trabal who got a grip on the situation and brought matters under control. The whole incident has to rank right up there as being among the more memorable moments in the Wild Kingdom. After all that activity, it seemed anticlimactic when the little monkey was contained and we were able to take it away for release in a safer jungle area some miles away. 
<laughs> well, and now I know what they mean when they say someone made a monkey out of me. <laughs> <laughs> Today, we have brought you just a few of the many memorable moments Jim and I have shared in our years together. Some were funny in the extreme, some very exciting, and some uncommonly interesting from the standpoint of scientific research. Nature, as we have experienced it over these years, has been a treasure chest of wonders. And if we protect our natural heritage, there will always be memorable moments in the wild kingdom.